Holding his breath, he unwinds the reel to the eerie red bulb's light. He can't afford to make one wrong move and ruin the negatives. But shaking hands, he gently shakes the tank from side to side. All he can do now is watch and wait. Finally, the wait is over. But when he begins to unspool the negatives again, the faint images that were starting to emerge sent a chill straight down his spine. He began to tremble as he realized the magnitude of what he'd just done. Just what had he stumbled upon? Netherlands native Martin Van Oors had been obsessed with photography from a young age. He especially loved the eerie feeling that vintage photographers evoked in him. And he tried to capture the particular feeling when he started to take his own images. On Martin's 12th birthday, he was presented with his very own camera. But his mother found herself growing increasingly concerned about his new favorite hobby. More specifically, his obsession with exploring the sinister underbelly of the town and catching in photographs. A mother's instincts are rarely wrong. Martin wasn't like other children of his age. When other boys were off with their friends, he preferred to be alone. Wandering through the streets of Breda with his camera by his side, his imagination could run wild. His favorite spots were the crumbling ruins of old buildings and abandoned places on the outskirts of the town. The adrenaline of exploring these dangerous and forgotten pockets of urban decay made him feel alive. And he wanted nothing more than catching a glimpse of the spirits who still lingered there. As he grew older, his obsession with the macabre only grew, much to his mother's dismay. When Martin became a teenager, he had already built an extensive portfolio of work. His bedroom wall were plastered with photographs, some of which he had taken himself and some that he had collected from newspapers or found in antique dealerships. But these were unhappy snaps that he'd collected. They were snapshots of the town hidden underbelly. So when Martin found himself inexplainably drawn to an antique camera in a thrift store years later, the mystery was too much to bear. The fateful day that took place in 2017. Martin was taking a stroll through the town when he suddenly found his feet moving towards the door of a thrift store a block away. He was looking for some inspiration for his latest photography project. Maybe he would find what he was looking for inside. He let his intuition guide him idly down the aisles until his eyes fell on exactly what he had been looking for. On a low shelf, a vintage camera squatted like a shiny black toad. Upon closer inspection, Martin realized that it was a size icon 520 by 2 even better, it was in pristine condition, hardly used. Fate had flung him in the camera's path for a reason, and although he wasn't sure what the reason was, he knew that the camera had been meant for him to find. Acting on pure instinct, he picked it up and took it to the counter to buy it. If his wife asked him why he had bought it, he would just say that he had bought it for her as a gift. Martin was ecstatic with his purchase, but he had no idea that he'd be getting a lot more than he had bargained for. When I came home and gave the camera to my wife as a gift, she was over the moon. After dinner, I told her I was considering using the camera to take pictures with since all the mechanics from the camera seemed to be in pristine condition. I normally shoot with all my photos in high-end gear, so working with an old-school piece of equipment seemed like a lot of fun. Little did he know, what he would find inside would prove to be anything but fun. The next morning, Martin could barely contain his excitement. He got up uncharacteristically early to inspect his new toy more thoroughly. But when he opened it up, something rattled inside. I wanted to see if the camera still worked, if everything opened and if the wheels were still turning. To my great surprise, there was a roll. But what Martin didn't realize was that once he decided to develop it, there would be no going back. It wasn't lost on Martin. What he had found in his hand had all the markings of a real-life horror story. Pressing his eye up against the lens, he had wondered who had done so before him, whose eye had looked through that lens, and what had they captured there on film. He knew that once he had made his decision, there would be no way undoing it. What secrets did the old camera contain? And would he regret seeing them? Wild speculations began to run through Martin's mind. What if the camera had belonged to someone involved in a crime? Back in his teenage years, Martin had scoured old newspapers at a local library to satisfy his fascination with all things macabre. But he had returned to one particular story over and over again. During the 1920s, the town of Hanover had been terrorized by a man named Fritz. After he was caught, his personal journals were released to the public. But the authorities had never found his camera. Martin began to view his new toy in a completely different light. It was a far-fetched idea. But the more Martin dwelled on it, the more frightened he became. It was not impossible that a camera could have made it this way from Hanover to Breda, a mere four-hour drive away by bus. Moreover, 
Not many people owned a camera like this in the 20s. The thought was terrifying. Even worse was that there was a roll of film inside it, just waiting to be developed. Martin had left his imagination run wild when he had found the film. Perhaps he even let it get the better of him. Hours passed and he still had a decision to make. He weighed his options. He couldn't hand the camera to the authorities, but he felt like he could have been overreacting. He didn't want to waste anybody's time when he had no evidence other than the slow, creepy feeling that had started to engulf him. Should he trust his intuition? On the other hand, a growing sense of curiosity had started to trouble his mind. He just had to know what was on that roll of film. But first, he had to do some research. Inspecting the roll of film gingerly, he noticed that it had the words exposed printed on its side. I thought that probably meant that the roll had been exposed and used. Martin knew that this particular make and model of camera was from the 20s, but that didn't tell them how old the roll of the film actually was. He fired up his laptop and furiously began a research, searching for the brand of film and gear it was made on Google. The date that came back sent shivers down his spine. I found out the camera was built in 1924. And to add fuel to the fire, the date correlated with Brits, the reign of terror. That meant that the camera was at least 89 years old. It would be a miracle if images on the film had survived. That gave Martin the confidence he needed to try to recover them on his own. He'd resolved that he'd let fate take the wheel. If there were no images, perhaps it was for the best. He knew the chances were slim. On a call to his good friend Johan Holman, an experienced photographic developer, he laid his suspicion on the table. Johan told Martin that developing a film would be almost impossible. It would take an enormous amount of care and patience and even then they may not get to see what was on the film. But Martin was insistent and eventually Johan relented. The prospect of solving an 89-year-old mystery was just too tempting. Could the negative supposedly have survived the ravages of time? And if they had, did the men really want to know what the truth was? There was only one way to find out. The roll of film couldn't be simply opened up and exposed to sunlight. So, Martin and Johan had no way of knowing if there were images to salvage. On a cold Tuesday morning, these men set up in Johan's kitchen in total darkness, carefully bathing the negatives in a chemical bath. The men were surprised when they began to see faint outlines emerging. The images were finally going to be released from their long-time prison. But was it a mistake? Martin, unable to wait any longer, hung up the negatives up in the shower and then began to frantically dry them with the blow dryer to hasten the development process. They had opened a Pandora's box and it was too late to go back now. After what seemed like an age, the negatives were fully dry enough to be viewed. In total, there were four photographs. Johan and Martin quickly loaded the negatives onto a projector and adjusted the first blurry image. Martin's eyes widened in disbelief as the woman's face came into view. It all seemed so surreal. She was standing on a pathway that wound around mountainside like a ghostly ribbon. Her face was turned slightly towards the side as if admiring the roaring ocean beneath her. The next two photographs were similar to the first, the same woman posing eerily in various locations. But who was she? Martin was relieved to find that his wild speculations of the camera's origin had been unfounded. But he was so wrapped up in his new mystery that he hardly felt the tiny pangs of disappointment. Entrance, the men flipped the next image. The final four photograph depicted an elderly man. The camera's telltale carry case was slung over his shoulder. He must be the owner of the camera and also the photographer. But the man's astonishing find had only left them with more unanswered questions. Where were these photographs taken? And how could they find the camera's original owner? Then Martin had an idea. He knew that the power of social media had been proven time and time again, but would it work this time? Posting the photographs on Facebook, he hoped that someone would come forward to help him solve the mystery. In just a few hours, the photos had been shared hundreds of times. Then someone posted a photo of their own that helped crack the case. A man posted on Google a street view of Biarritz in France, where he thought the mysterious photos had been taken. Martin inspected it carefully and knew it was right. It was the same place that the woman had posed in the photographs, with the same coastline and cemented pathway. Then Martin received another message from Facebook. This time the case was blown wide open. Marion, a Dutch woman, recognized the photos on Martin's Facebook post almost immediately as her grandparent. She revealed that the man who had taken the pictures was Theo Lammers. She also knew that he and his wife, Elizabeth Lammers, had visited Biritz. Martin was astonished by his new revelation, but he knew exactly what he had to do. 
Mirren was born in the Netherlands, but had later moved to Canada. Martin understood that traveling there would be expensive, but he knew he had to deliver the old photographs of her grandparents to her in person. He created a GoFundMe account to raise the funds, and soon the donations came pouring in. People all over the world wanted to see the long-lost images reunited with their family. Martin traveled all the way from Breda to Canada to return the photographs to Marion. When she saw them, she was ecstatic. I love all of the pictures and I would like to keep them all together as this is how they are meant to be, she said. My house is 